No, 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 my dog listens. Let's just hope and pray. I love my dogs too much to, to be naive. There's a good realistic recall here for Lulu, the seven month old black lab. Lou, come. Yes, good boy. Sit. Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Today, you guys, we have one of the videos you guys ask me about all the time. What type of remote collar do you use to get your dog fully off leash? Well, today I'm gonna walk you through the introduction phases with one of our board and trains, Lou, from step one to step done. Oh, that was a good one. Uh, and so today, guys, we're gonna be using the dog to arc. Uh, with some other things. So we have our 15 foot long line, which we may transition over to a 30 foot long line uh, in the, at the end or in the middle of our session. We also have the dog to arc unit guys. So this is um, the dog to arc. You guys can find the link in the description. It's still got sand on it from my beach visit uh, a couple weeks ago. Anyway, and then I'm gonna be using some food. So I have my food pouch here with my Happy Howies. Of course, my four foot, no bad dog, dog training leash. And so this is what we're gonna be using today. And I have a bungee, which is not sold by Dogtra, um, but it's something I like using on the dogs because it creates a little bit more comfort when they're doing recalls outside and they're running around. And last but not least, guys, Dogtra makes this sound box. This sound box is invaluable to uh, my clients as well as myself, so you guys know exactly when I'm using the e-collar and when I'm not. One of the biggest questions and one of the biggest faults most dog owners and some dog trainers even have is being able to tell the dog owner or the person that they're training when they're using the pressure on and off. So every single time I use the e-collar and the e-collar comes on, guys, there's gonna be this sound. Um, as you guys know, this is not a correction uh, device. This is something that we're gonna be using for communication during this training lesson. Let's just, let's just go grab Lou and let's get right into it from start to finish. So the e-collar needs to be nice and tight. So the actual contact points need to be against the dog's skin. We're gonna get started, guys. It's super simple. It's very, very basic. Again, association, low-level stimulation of the e-collar with the verbal cues outside. But outside is a whole different ball game, as you guys know, if you've worked with any dogs. And Lou is the best of all the dogs. So we're just gonna let Lou be Lou, guys. And we're gonna be using a continuous uh, and we're gonna keep it right around four or five. Now, as you guys know, uh, the more distractions outside, the higher your level will be just because he won't feel it because there's too much stimulation going on. I'm gonna put the food away, guys, because it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be worth any while to have him chase me around with this food. Um, and so I'm gonna put the food away and just use verbal praise because we can't work on recall if he's stuck to me because I have food and he's a lab puppy. So here's a good recall. Lou, come. Yes, good come! Good boy! Good boy! Break! Again, guys, it's simultaneously at the same time. So as soon as I say his name, I'm gonna be holding this continuous down until he gets to me. And um, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I threw the treat bag and I tried to go over the tent. It landed on the tent. So it's uh, a really good distraction for him as he's looking for the food and I'm able to recall him. Again, we're on a five, continuous, as soon as he turns to me and he comes to me, the pressure shuts off. So he's getting actual pressure that he's never gotten before from a distance, which is huge and it's invaluable. So let's try it right here. So Lou's over here checking the food out. Lou, come. Yes, good come. Good man. Good man. So again, Lou's having a great time because e-collar training is fun, guys. It's empowering. It gives a lot of confidence to dogs because it gives them the opportunity to shut pressure off. And so, and it's relationship building. And guess what? After I do this for about another week, I'm gonna be able to have this dog completely off leash wherever I go. Um, so it's really, really great. I'm so happy for him and I'm so happy and excited for his owners to see what their dog can do. Let's do it again right here. Lou, come. Yes. Yes, good boy. Good job. Good job, break. So a couple side notes, guys, on, on e-collar training is quality over quantity. So we don't wanna do maybe more than 10 during each session. So this is a template. This is a template I wanted to show you guys exactly how to introduce this collar specifically for off-leash off recall uh, with the Dogtra Arc. So Lou, come. Yes, good boy. Good come, buddy. Good, and guys, I'm just giving him verbal praise just because, like I said before, the uh, 
the food was too too much for him. He was just stuck to me, which I guess is a good thing here. We're gonna do it again here. He's looking for the food. Lou, come! Yes, good boy! Good boy! Good come! All right, now I'm just gonna uh, do some obedience so you guys know how to how the pressure works with the obedience functions as well. And just listen for the sound box so you know when the pressure's turned on and off. All right, let's do some place work. Lou, place! Yes, sit! Yes, stay. Good. Lou, break! Good boy. Now, as you guys know, break means he can do whatever he wants. So I'm just gonna give him another break, let him do what he wants. So as you guys are hearing this, it's at the same time. So my new, my new line of communication with him is very clear. So it's at the same time. So it's, it's just a new foreign language to him that he's starting to be fluent with. So he understands that this stimulation is coming from me. Every single time I ask him to do something, I'm tapping and I'm tapping low, 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 low levels. So that way guys, like right now he's off leash. He's, he's got my other leash. Um, when I turn this stimulation onto him, he knows that this stimulation is me. So I always tell people it's the equivalence to a cell phone. It's like if you put, a, if you put an iPhone in an alien, alien's back pocket, they're gonna feel it, they're gonna hear it, everything's going off, all these different sounds and bells and whistles and they're trying to figure out what's going on. And as soon as they figure out how to stop it, then they know through conditioning and they know through escape training that, that whatever sensation it is is going off and they need to respond in order to turn it off. So that's exactly what we're doing here. And I can't explain to you how invaluable it is to be able to let my dogs go a mile, half a mile or whatever, and be able to respond to them. So when I'm using this, it's almost all positive reinforcement, guys. There's no corrections being used in the preliminary stages and the foundational stages. I have a video I'll link in the, in the thing above that shows how to go up and how to correct when needed. And the big thing for me guys is, is I love dogs so much. I can't explain how much I love the clients and my own dogs that I work with that if anything were ever to happen to them as they're enjoying their off leash freedom. The real question is guys, and I don't care if you're pro e collar or you're not or whatever, or maybe you're just finding this video and you're trying to figure it out. The real question for me guys is the reason why I got into remote collar training is because my own dog almost got hit by a train because I couldn't recall him. And then I, started doing uh, dog to remote collar off leash training about five years ago. And so if your dog runs away, you have two options if your dog is completely without equipment. You, you either pray and hope that they hear you because they're in, a, they're in a state of mind of chasing that squirrel, they're smelling it, they're ready to get it. And they actually respond to say, you know what, this squirrel isn't that important. And then they come away. Alternatively, what else are you gonna do? For me, I'm not taking that chance. I want my dogs to be off leash. I want my dogs to enjoy their life in the ponds, in the fields, hunting, being dogs. But I also want the responsibility to make sure that I can recall my dog at any given time. And if they do have an oh crap moment where they're a dog because they're animals and they go boom, deer, squirrel, chipmunks, skunk, whatever, I have the ability to communicate with them with this to a half a mile, a mile, a mile and a half, and so on and so forth. So. Low level stimulation. Again, we're on a five out of 127 levels. Lou, come. Yes, good come, buddy. Good man, sit. No, 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 my dog listens. Let's just hope and pray. I love my dogs too much to, to be naive to animal uh, behavior. <laughs> I definitely need something to, that, that can reach out to them from a distance. Lou, come. Yes, good boy, sit. So I'm gonna make this a little bit more realistic. I'm gonna walk around the property and do some realistic recalls as he gets into other things. Right now we move from a 30 foot drag line to a 15 foot drag line. So progressionally, uh, just so you guys know, is when's the right time to completely remove the physical equipment as a leash? Um, practice, practice, practice. Once you're getting 100% recall every time, um, then it's okay and safe to completely let go of the leash. For me, it's really about, about conditioning him for reality. What happens when he doesn't come back. That's the real question, guys. So that's what I'm doing is I'm practicing for reality because life's gonna throw him curveballs. It's gonna throw me curveballs. All right, you guys. So here's a good realistic. Here's a good realistic recall here for Lou, the, the seven-month-old black lab. Lou, come. Yes. Yes. Good. Come. Just gonna give you guys a quick tip that when I'm recalling him, I'm using. So there's two options on most dog trips. There's the nick and the continuous and so the continuous is exactly how it sounds if i hold the continuous down is what you're hearing pop 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 up until the dog responds or i can use nick and nick is exactly how it sounds it's just one click nick to get the dog's attention 
All right, I'm gonna try to walk away, guys, and see if we can do another realistic recall just to paint you a picture. I'm trying to give you guys the best picture I possibly can to make it realistic for you guys at home. So let's hear, here we go. He's pretty far away from me now, but he's watching me. Lou, come! Yes, good boy! Well done! Good come, good boy! Good job. My goal and my job, guys, is for him to understand that that little stimulation on his neck, he's like, okay, that tickles, what is that? Is that you? And I'm responding, yes, it's me, buddy, it's me. Pay attention to me. And that way, guys, because I love dogs so much, as you guys know, that way, guys, when he's way over there and he's off leash and he's chasing ducks and he's in the pond and he's being a lab, I have the ability to actually communicate with him through 127 levels. It, it would break my heart if a dog ran, you know, on, on into traffic because they were chasing a rabbit very innocently and very non-maliciously because they're dogs and they're animals. So we have to do our part um, because every single day, guys, this technology, my microphone, my cell phone, we, we depend on technology for so much and our dogs should not be limited to that. So I hope this video is helpful for you guys. We're gonna keep rolling into some of these fun things with you. We're gonna keep having a blast as we do with all of our dog tree units with our dogs. And um, I hope you guys are enjoying this so far because I know I am and I know Lou is for sure. No, st stay, stay, stay. All right guys, another realistic recall. We're gonna go to Lou and I'm gonna recall him. Lou, come! Yes, buddy, good boy! Good come, yes, that's my buddy. He put the jets on there at the end. Oh, good man. So this may be guys like the second or third day for you. Uh, the first couple days we're just doing all the basic stuff on a low level. So pick a level, maybe uh, three or four out of 127 on the dog tree units uh, generally. Um, and this is the dog tree arc, like I said before, link in the description, of course. And so this is maybe the three or, three or four day mark for you guys, letting him drag a 15 foot long line and just stimulation come, practice, practice. And you're damn right, if he doesn't respond and his life depends on it, I am 100% gonna give him a correction and cause a little bit of uncomfortability around the dog's neck as a microsecond to make sure that the love and the compassion that I've built with the dog doesn't end under a car because I love this dog and I love all the dogs that I work with, like I said. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was informative. I hope it taught you something. I hope it educated you about the e-collar. And again, don't forget, in the link in the description below will be all the information, all the equipment I use. If you guys haven't yet, do me a favor and like this video. Smash that subscribe button. And I will talk to you next time. Peace. Hey, feel I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money, that's a sticker. She picture perfect, so I told her.